Hi, my name's uh, Sarah Jane Brackett and I've been asked my opinion on inclusion. Uh, just a bit of background about me. Um, I went to university at 18 and then I went to uh, Newman College when I was 28 and did a PGCE for Upper Juniors. And I've been, I taught from 1996 till a couple of years ago when I retired. Um, in those years, I did 15 years as a Senko. Before that, I was a full-time class teacher. So I've seen inclusion over the years and in different authorities. At first, I worked for um, Birmingham. And in Birmingham, at the time that I was a class teacher and then subsequently a Senko, it, it seemed that most of the children went out with a one-to-one -one or a TA to do any work that they needed to do. Um, when I was um, in Solihull, subsequently, I tried to encourage children to be supported in class because I thought that was that was really inclusion. And I thought also that it was um, good for them to be um, working with partners and their, their table groups, uh, which would help their social skills and making friends. Um, and so after retiring, I became a one-to-one um, -one TA and I'm working for Warsaw at the moment. I've been with, with a boy for, this is my third year with him, and he had a um, language delay. And we've worked very hard on that. When I spoke, when I first working with him in year two, he couldn't speak and he couldn't be understood. And now he can speak and he's using his newfound voice to answer lots of questions in class and to make friends. So that's all very positive. Uh, when I was a Senko, um, initially, um, I used to try and work with children as much as I could in small groups, but this involved taking them out of class, which, as I say, isn't inclusion. But when I worked in Surly Hall and subsequently now, I think it's very, it's very easy for a TA to be relied on by the child who has special needs. And I've always said, and I've said to parents, and some of them have been looked horrified, that actually the children losing their independence by being stuck to a, a TA all the time. When I first had my boy in Warsaw, I said to his mum, the main thing I wanted to be for him was to make him in an independent, independent learner. And I feel that I have done that now. Uh, we, we work it because he has an EHCP. We work it that I have 20 minutes alone with him in the morning before the other children come and 20 minutes after school. We get loads packed into that and um, he's made huge progress. He's sort of working at a year three child now and we're in year four, especially in maths. So if there's something that he can do, I sit with him, I sit with him for the introduction. I talk through anything that he's got to do on the whiteboard and then I leave him to get on with it. Obviously, if he's struggling, I'll come back and talk to him again. Um, I do do interventions with him and the class. I do run a read, write, ink group for him and some other children who are still on read, write, ink in year four. And how I have a friendship group that I take out um, out of the class to talk about building relationships and keeping up with those friendships and sorting out problems if they arise. So I feel I have quite a lot of experience of inclusion and I think it is better done um, in the classroom where they're feeling part of the learning that's going on for everybody and they feel, don't feel singled out. If you start taking people out of class, then I think they are singled out. Uh, we have speech therapists that work in the school. They take them out because it's a one-to-one -one and obviously they don't want to be interrupting when they're doing oral work, which is fair enough. And we have a Thrive team that work with children that are finding it very difficult, uh, maybe with anxiety, um, to work in the classroom. So, so they're taken out, but I think that's fair enough. Um, I hope um, I've given you the answers that what I was supposed to. And uh, if you need anything else from me, just uh, get in touch with me through LinkedIn. Okay, thank you, Sarah.